We're talking about laws right now to limit LGBTQ rights being considered in 41 states, according to the American Civil Liberties Union, and more than 300,000 American teenagers identify as trans at this moment in time, and most of them live in states that have proposed or already passed laws restricting their rights. 90% of LGBTQ youth say their well-being is also negatively impacted by recent politics. That's according to a poll by The Trevor Project. That's an advocacy group that provides mental health support for young people. And more than two dozen mental and physical health associations have endorsed the need for treatments for what's known as gender dysphoria. The nonprofit organization Stand With Trans aims to help trans and non-binary people and their loved ones find community and resources. Each October, the group creates a month of programming for Trans Empowerment Month including support groups, educational trainings, panels, and workshops. Ross Keith founded Stand With Trans in 2015. Dubs Weinblatt is its Trans Empowerment Month Program Coordinator. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, Ross, let me start with you. You started Stand With Trans when your son came out as transgender when he was 13 years old, and, and you couldn't find the resources as a mom, as a parent, that you needed. What were you looking for back then? some validation for me as a parent, um, an understanding of what it meant to be transgender. I knew we needed to help and support our child, and we just didn't know how. We didn't have anyone to talk to. There were no medical resources. Every phone call ended in just a, I was hitting a brick wall, and uh, the question would be, oh, a minor? Oh, a 13-year-old? No, sorry. We only treat adults. We only have support groups for adults. So. It was really a challenge. We were very much alone and very isolated. And my son said, I don't know anyone like me. Mm. Yeah. So How long ago was that? 2013. 2013. Yeah, a lot has changed since grade. then. A lot has a lot changed. changed. Yeah. Dubs, uh, we met on a different story. We've been in touch ever since. Yeah. I know your story. You've got a great podcast called Thank You For Coming Out. But for folks Thank who you. don't know your story, uh, what, what do you think they should know about your personal coming out? Sure. Uh, well, I'm a non-binary trans person. Um, and for folks who don't know what that is, um, when I was born, I was assigned female at birth. So people call that your sex assigned at birth. And then as I grew up and I understood myself more and more, I realized that my gender identity, like how I know myself on the inside, did not align with what I was assigned at birth. Um, and I also realized that the people who I had crushes on um, were not, quote unquote, heterosexual crushes. So that's like my sexual orientation. So I, as a young kid, I was really trying to figure out all of these different parts of my identity. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I was born in the mid 80s and there were no resources <laughs> right, or, that I knew of. And so it was really challenging. And, 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 and how did you know this, Dubs? That you, how did you know that it was different, what you were feeling? Because I think people get confused about the sex you're assigned at birth and your gender and your sexual orientation. How did you know the difference for you? Um, I just knew in my gut. So people would say to me, like, you're my daughter, you're my sister, um, used, you know, words like girl for me. And that never felt right. right. It always felt at odds with who I knew myself to be on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't, it honestly wasn't until I was in my late 20s when I learned about non-binary identity where I was like, oh, that's me. Yeah. That, I finally figured it out. When you were growing up, did you think you were the only one that felt like this? Um, Pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So then what are the resources that you wish had been available when you were just starting out, when you were young? Uh, not that you're not friends. young. I was trying to like, <laughs> call you <laughs> old. I was like, how do I get out of this? Yeah. <laughs> younger. You were younger? <laughs> younger, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, really just more representation in the media and like seeing positive representation. I saw the movie Boys Don't Cry, which is a mm -hmm. very powerful but very violent film against yes. a trans man. With Hilary Swank. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And it yes. was real. It, it, had negative impacts on me. Yes. Um, and so having you know, more, more representation um, and, and really support groups that Stand With Trans has and different programming where I could just have met other people who was like, okay, I'm not alone in this. Yeah. Roz, as you know, uh, gender affirming care for trans people has become an increasingly hot button issue in this country and, and that's happened in the last couple of years. Can you clarify for folks at home what gender affirming care actually is? Absolutely, that's a great question. So that is basically providing the care that a trans person requires in order to live authentically. So that might be um, 
getting seen by an endocrinologist. Endocrinologists deal in the business of hormones. So regardless of age, if somebody wants to medically transition, that's typically one of the things that are high on the priority. They want to take cross-sex hormones or hormones that are gonna give them particular um, physical attributes that they might not have um, based on the puberty they went through or the gender they were assigned at birth. So that's the big one. And then that also translates to um, just affirming care. So finding mental health therapy that is going to be affirming, that's going to support and validate th this person's identity. Mm. Um, it's in the schools. It's being mm. allowed to use a different name if the young person chooses. Or the different select, pronouns or different names. Different pronouns, names. different yeah. name. Um, and there are a lot of school districts who are doing that. And then there are many who are saying, you know, sorry, we, we can't yeah. change your name. I want us all to get this right. What do you think, Dubs, is the best way if we think there's someone in our life who's trans or non-binary? Should we ask to, should we ask them? Should we engage in a conversation? What are the right words to use in less than 30 seconds? I know, yeah. <laughs> I know this is hard. Welcome to Morning TV. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I said, I, I say this a lot, and I think it's just really important to lead with love and kindness yeah. and showing that you're open, that you're non-judgmental. Um, creates that space for someone to trust you to share themselves. Yeah. Well, you're modeling it well. I hope we are too. Ross Keith, Dubs Weinblatt, thank you very thank much. You for coming. Thank you. All. you.